In this video, we'll be covering the titration lab. Uh, so in part one, we're trying to find the molarity of the titrant. This is where we standardize the NaOH. So um, in our uh, so here's our here's our burette, and I made a stock solution and I uh, diluted it. I didn't measure it very well because I knew we were going to do part one, which is to standardize this. This is supposed to be 0.1. It, uh, it might be 0 0.099. It might be 0 0.101. It, it's around 0 0.1 somewhere, but we want to know this exact number because we're going to use this same solution as our titrant for the rest of the lab for parts two and three. And then we need to know, so we need to know this exact quantity this exact concentration to make our uh, our other numbers more accurate. So, um, if you if you titrate this and you get it to the um, and you get it take it all the way to the end point here, I'm looking for a pink color. Best I could do is red. So you get to the end point and it turns pink. You stop the titration, and then this is the following is true. So the moles of KHP are equal to the moles of OH minus, and we're we're interested in the molarity of OH. So moles it doesn't have molarity, but if we substitute this moles equals molarity times volume, uh, and we we don't have moles of KHP what we have what we have is um, we weighed it and we have the molar mass so moles equals mass over molar mass as well so we're gonna substitute this for this right here so we'll have mass of KHP over the molar mass of KHP and then we have it's equal set it equal to the molarity of OH times the volume of OH and we're interested in the molarity so solving for solving for the molarity then we have the molarity of OH equals the mass of KHP over the molar mass of KHP times the volume of OH if we divide both sides by OH, and that should give us our molarity of OH. This number is uh, this number is weighed, so this is from your data. Uh, this number that's a known number, so we need to know get the value for KHP. The molar mass of KHP is 204.2 grams per mole, um, and this is from our data. So this is going to be the volume required. For uh, to reach the end point or stoichiometric point. Okay, so moving on to part two, we're gonna. So once we have this number, we're gonna be using it for part two and part three. So here's part two: is we want to find the molar mass of the unknown acid. Um, and again, if we titrate this correctly and uh, to the end point, then we have the moles of the unknown acid would be equal to the moles of base used to titrate it with. And again, we're going to use some substitution here. So the same substitution steps as we used in the previous slide. So we'll have the mass of the unknown over molar mass of unknown. And this time, this time we, this time we know this number. This is from part one. This is from part one. That's our standardized amount. Okay, this is going to be from our data. And this is also from our data. This is what we weighed. And then we, um, we're we interested in this number. This is what we don't know. So <clears throat> if we solve for the molar mass of the unknown, then we'll get that the molar mass of the known, unknown is the mass of the unknown, which we weighed over the molarity of base times the volume of base used for the titration. 
Um, so that's it for part two. That should give us the uh, the unknown molar mass. So um, you're supposed to do an error. We're going to have two error analyses. We're going to have a, an error analysis for part two. So we're going to have um, calculate a percent error for the unknown acid. Check um, school loop, and I'll, um, I'll let you guys know what the unknown was. Um, and uh, go back to the equations for parts one and two. I, I just kind of like went through those equations. But go through them, specifically examine, and uh, be critical of the measured values especially. So let's take a second and go back and see what that means. So the measured value. So this is a measured value. This was on a scale. Are there going to be, a, would you anticipate there being lots of problems with that? There shouldn't be, um, not, not, for, not for this acid. Um, however, this is one that should be looked at here. The molarity of the base. This is from part one. Okay, when you, uh, when you standardize the OH. Um, and we used, keep in mind, we used KHP, which was dried. For around two hours, okay, and KHP can absorb water. Um, so if it wasn't completely dry, the mass of KHP uh, could be fictitiously high. Okay, and so go back and see what that would do to your calculations. Also. You should also be critical of this number. So did you, you know, perhaps was there an overshoot issue? Um, so we need this statement to be true in order for this number to be accurate, the molar mass of the unknown. Um, and so this, so um, you should also look at the volume of the OH. Okay, so for the molarity of OH, we need to go all the way back to part one and be critical of this data. So I already mentioned being critical of this. Okay, so was the KHP, was this dry completely? And if it wasn't, what's going to happen to the molarity of OH? Okay, and then if the molarity of OH is off, then now look and see where the molarity of OH went. So it went in the denominator for this equation over here. Okay, so here's molarity of OH, volume of OH. So this is in the denominator. Let's go back a slide. Um, and that molarity of OH was obtained from drying down the KHP. Um, this is a known value, so there, there's no problems here. There could be a problem here as well. So as you can see, there's lots of error that could happen here. Um, but I'll have you guys um, list. Um, I'm going to have you guys list um, at least two reasons why you might be too high, your molar mass, or might, why it might be too low. Okay, part three is we're going to graph the titration data and determine the pKa off of the graph. And I'll show you real quick on Excel how to do that. So we're going to use Excel or use Google Sheets if you don't have Excel. So let me go to, um, I have on an Excel sheet here, our data, or this is some sample data that I, that I uh, typed in. So just type in your data, choose two columns. Uh, right here I have the what looks like the volume data and then here are the pH data. So I'm going to highlight, click click and hold the left mouse button and drag, um, insert. Go over here to uh, scatter and choose the scatter where the points are connected here. So I'll choose that one. Um, here we can, uh, we can choose a, a layout that allows us to title our graph. Okay, so you can... Um, you could extend this, make it bigger, and you can give give, give your graph a name by double clicking in that box. Make sure you title the axes by double clicking in this box and this box as well. Um, it may be helpful to add some grid lines here. Um, this actually, this option here might actually be helpful um, if we choose this right here, this layout. Uh, and we, we lost our title here, but you can add that later. All right, so what this is what I was looking for. I was looking for the uh, the, the minor grid lines to be added because we're going to find our uh, 
we're going to find our, our grid line. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to find on here that our equivalence point is about right here. So we need to we need to draw draw a line here and estimate from the graph where this volume is. Okay, so that volume corresponds to let's see, these are going up by ones. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So this must be around 21.2. Okay, that's what I that's what I would go with. So probably around 21.2. This this is around 21.2. So divide that by 2 uh and then you get Okay, so you get 10.6. So 10.6 would be around around right here. So this is 11. This is this would be about 10.5. So it'd be around here. So that correl correlates to a pH of about 4 from this graph. Um so so take your equivalence point, divide that by 2, and then we find um half of that. So that should be the halfway point. Um and then uh, match it up w with your graph and then find what value on the y-axis that that corresponds to. So this is actually looks to me like about 4.0 of a, of a pH. So that's our, uh, that would actually be our pKa if this is the halfway point. Okay. Um, so the error analysis for part three is we're going to do a percent error with the pKa um, and I'll give you also check school loop. I'll give you the 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 actual pKa for the acid that we used, and then do an error analysis with that pKa pKa. Um, and again, just like you did in part two, list two reasons you might be too high or two reasons your pKa is too low. There are lots and lots of reasons. You have to go all the way back to part one because again we used the standardized um, OH. And uh, our our number, how much it took to titrate it to the stoichiometric point, was based off of that number. That's what goes into the calculation, or I'm sorry, that's what actually goes into the burette. And so, if it's you know a little more constant, if you're if it's a little more concentrated than what you thought, um, then it would get to the end, re reach the end point prematurely. Okay, and then your pH might be too low if something like that happens. Okay, so that's the end of our. Uh, tutorial on uh, on uh, the titration lab.